now to Government Center in Fall River and, and uh, Fall River Mayor uh, C. Samuel Center as they are ready to go uh, with a preparation uh, event as to uh, what we're looking for tonight and into this week. And uh, let's go to that right now. Alan, can you hear me? Yes, sir. We're, Great. Uh, we're good to go. All right. We're about to start here. And uh, good afternoon to you and good afternoon to everybody here. Um, I. Um, I want to thank all of you for coming and, and for your interest uh, as we prepare for this very serious storm. Um, certainly the most serious of this winter season and uh, probably the most serious of the last two. The latest estimates that I have received are that uh, we may receive over 24 inches of snow and uh, that will be combined uh, beginning this evening with uh, high winds. I, um, our estimates are that the Storm uh, is going to start picking up uh, beginning uh, very late this afternoon, around 5 or 6 o'clock, and uh, will intensify around 8 o'clock and uh, go all the way, our estimate is, uh, into uh, tomorrow morning, uh, maybe not even winding down until midday. Uh, based upon that estimate, that uh, projection, um, we are declaring a parking ban as of 1 o'clock. The objective is to keep our roads as safe as we can uh, for our hospitals, for our shelters, and for our clinics. We're also announcing at this time, I have just got off the phone with Superintendent Mayo Brown, uh, Fall River Public Schools will be closed both tomorrow, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And City Hall will be closed tomorrow and I'll probably make a decision at some point during the day tomorrow about Wednesday. Uh, despite the fact that City Hall will be closed tomorrow, uh, my office, the mayor's office, will be open throughout the entire night. Myself and my staff, uh, somebody will be here at all time and um, uh, in order to coordinate uh, our, um, our efforts throughout the city. Um, leading this uh, along with uh, me and my staff um, will be uh, the Director of Public Works, uh, Ken Pacheco. I know that he has uh, some um, information that he would like to share with you and uh, some advice. So I will be uh, asking him to speak, as well as um, Laura Ferreira, Chief Dan Racine, Chief Robert Viveros, uh, Director uh, Richard Aguiar, and uh, Deputy Director uh, Beth Fonts. So, um, all for the public, uh, and I'll begin with uh, Mr. Pacheco. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, the city will um, begin its operations this morning about 6 a.m. with uh, pre-treating, and we'll continue that throughout the day. We will also um, incorporate into that a, um, a 35 um, uh, commitment, a 35 uh, piece commitment to. Um, Sanders, which will uh, will hit the seven sectors of the city from uh, three o'clock on, and uh, we have 210 private contractors who are uh, going to come in later on today to uh, to start the plowing operations, along with 25 pieces of city equipment, uh, which is basically phase one of uh, snow removal operations, and the second part of the snow removal operations will be hauling. With the expected. Uh, uh, 20 plus inches of snow, we are uh, going to have to move some snow around from different areas in the city, uh, some of our main thoroughfares, uh, uh, schools, and, uh, and other areas that we feel are going to be congested uh, due to the sheer volume. So we have another um, <clears throat> 35 pieces of uh, hauling equipment, uh, 10 loaders, and 20 backhoes, which will be used to, uh, to take care of the hauling operations. All in all, uh, the, the city will be throwing uh, a little over 300 pieces of equipment at this storm and um, we will be uh, fighting it throughout the night into tomorrow and uh, trying to bring some sense of normalcy back to the city uh, by uh, the end of the day tomorrow. Uh, thank you very much uh, Ken and now the director of our traffic department Laura Ferrell. As the mayor said um, the parking ban will go into effect at 1 p.m. Uh, we are asking residents to please obey this parking ban, especially when coming home from work 
if you place your cars already on the correct side of the street will be a tremendous help throughout the night with plows and emergency vehicles. There are several numbers that will be listed um, on media. Um, Channel 17 will have all the numbers that residents can call. As the mayor said, his office will be available. That number is 324-2600. Um, 324-2801 will also be available to the public as well as several numbers. These um, telephone numbers are for parking ban, um, snow questions, emergencies. Um, if you have a medical emergency, you would stick with the regular numbers that you would call the 911 number. But these numbers, anything to do with snow, um, streets, um, plowing, please use these numbers and keep the emergency numbers available for emergency. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Chief of Police, uh, Dan Racine. Good morning, Mr. Mayor. Well, first and foremost, I want to tell the public that we are well trained, well prepared, and well equipped to respond to emergencies. If there are emergencies during the storm, and I suspect there will be, the FRPD, fire, and EMS can get to you. We're uploading uh, more personnel to 911 and on the street to ensure that we can get to an emergency if one arises. Again, cooperation, courtesy, and compliance is really what gets us through this, so we ask the public to uh, cooperate. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. I'm Chief of the Fire Department, Fall River Fire Department, Robert Viveros. Um, I would ask that once the storm is over, if uh, anyone who has a hydrant in front of their house or next to their property, um, if you are capable, if you are healthy enough, if you could clear any snow so hydrants could be more easily identified, that, that would be a big help for the fire department. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Uh, the Director of our Emergency Management, Richard Aguiar. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, 7 p.m. this evening, we will open up a shelter at JP High School. Um, I would ask if you do go to the shelter, please bring your essentials such as medications, bring a pillow with you. Um, if you do bring children, um, any supplies for the children, particularly if you have an infant, diapers, um, all your medication you're going to bring with you, anything that you may need, um, I would suggest you bring. Um, we will have food there for you. Um, one thing that people don't realize, if you do come to the shelter, you have contact lenses, bring your contact container with a solution. Um, if you have a hearing impediment and you need batteries for your hearing aid, if you're going to be there long term, please bring extra batteries. It's very important. Um, sanitize um, hand lotion just for your own self. Anything that you may think you should bring with you, I would advise to bring with you. Um, if you are going to stay home, um, the few things that you can do, um, number one, fill your cup with gas. Um, keep a gas grill container um, full for your outside gas stove in case you have to cook outside. Uh, fill your tub up with water in case you need water. Um, ice, you can fill up soda bottles um, with water and freeze those. Um, have a gener generator on hand. Um, one important thing also, you can um, retain hot water from your hot water heater. It usually stores some hot water if you do need them, if you do need hot water. Um, also have portable uh, radios on hand and batteries. Look out for um, fallen tree branches, very important. Um, wires down, do not go next to any uh, electrical wires. It's very important not to do so. Look out for gas meters that may be broken. Um, and just use common sense. Do not use any open flame in your apartment or your house. You can use candles that are contained with a glass. Um, do not use your oven to heat your house because you can get carbon dioxide fumes in your house. Um, electrical heaters, be careful with those. Keep them away from furniture, clothing, um, so they won't ignite a fire. Just, it, in a storm like this, use common sense. Um, emergency management, to iterate, stay off the roads, please, so they can do their job. Um, we will be in contact with all department heads, and we will keep you informed. I do have a list of stuff that you may need. Feel free to call Government Center or my office at 508-324-2733, extension 107, and I can get you a list of the um, any supplier you will need um, for the, um, the shelter. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, now the deputy. EMS Director Beth Fox. Um, thank you, Mayor. We'll have all four ALS ambulances up and running. Um, you'll be able to contact us through the 911 system. 
Um, we ask that you preemptively uh, contact your pharmacy if you need any prescription refills. Any patients that are on um, at-home oxygen, should you lose power, we do have some uh, the capability to fill your spare tank so that we can keep you um, in your oxygen if needed. Um, I've made contact with both methadone clinics here in Fall River. If you are a patient at one of the methadone clinics, they're making provisions for you to have your dosing for the days. They will be closed tomorrow, but they're making provisions for you to get your dosing for tomorrow, so you should make contact with them today. And um, just if you have, if you experience any delays in responses, just keep in mind that, you know, we'll get to you, the weather conditions, and um, if you need to uh, have a medical emergency, call 911 and we'll take care of you. Thank you very much, Beth. Um, my message, which I will be reiterating as much as I can over the next uh, 48 hours, is to stay safe. Prepare for an extremely severe storm. And uh, think about your safety, uh, your family's safety, and your neighbor's safety. Let's all pull together as a city, as a community. And um, uh, let's make our primary objective to avoid and avert any tragedies. Uh, with that, I would uh, open it up to questions, I should add. Uh, that we have also in this room uh, for your questions, uh, the city administrator, uh, the chief of operations, uh, the health inspector, excuse me, the director of health, uh, the building inspector, and the human resources director. So uh, any questions uh, from any of you about the storm and our preparations? My Mr. Questions Mayor, I want to ask uh, Mr. Aguiar, uh, as far as the shelters, uh, what about pets? Uh, no pets allowed. Um, Next year, the governor sends an order that we have to uh, make a provision for pets, but of this year, we cannot allow pets uh, in the shelter. Thank you. Uh, um, there was another question. Uh, I have a question, actually. Sure. Two questions for uh, Chief Racine, if we can do this quickly. Uh, Chief, uh, when last time we went through this, there were people uh, uh, out in the middle of uh, a blizzard uh, pushing baby carriages and just uh, looking around to see what's uh, what's going on. Are, are your uh, is your force going to be trying to get those people uh, off the streets and, uh, and somewhere safe tonight? Again, cooperation, compliance, courtesy. We'll be telling these folks, obviously, it's not a good place to be walking around, in particular with baby carriages or babies. Uh, driving, obviously, if you don't need to drive, don't drive. Let us do our jobs, in particular DPW, clearing the streets, ambulances, fire trucks. Uh, less people out there, the better. Uh, Chief, second question. Uh, a couple of years ago, the last time we went through this, there were issues with uh, people running out of batteries for oxygen, uh, things like that. Are, are you folks prepared? And are, is somebody in the city telling people to, you know, uh, start charging batteries? Because this is uh, maybe going to be a little longer storm than uh, what people have been used to. Um, as far as the oxygen is concerned, most of the people's at home devices are um, AC driven, they're driven by electricity. Um, we do have some extra oxygen should they lose power and they need us to fill their manual tanks. We're, we're equipped to do that. Uh, if Mr. Bisco would be available, uh, I'm curious about, uh, we know there's issues with the, uh, the roof at the old police station and there are, you know, older buildings in this city. If, if we have a tremendous storm where suddenly uh, two, three feet are, are sitting on uh, on roofs, are there, are there buildings you're especially concerned about? Alan, hold on one second, because I'm going to ask him to take my position here so you can hear him and, and your, all your listeners can hear him clearly. All right, thank you, sir. Hi. Uh, yes, we are concerned with all the flat roofs in the city. Uh, the old police station, uh, it's been repaired a number of times. The only we, thing we can do is check the drains, make sure they're clear, because after the storm, and if the temperature goes up and we get some rain, that's going to add to the weight of the roof. The water has to have some place to go. That's why all the flat roofs in the city, people have to check their drains. That's, that's so important. Curious too, uh, if somebody can answer this question, I believe the normal uh, storm allocation is around a half a million dollars in the uh, city budget. Does this storm pretty much uh, wipe it out or does anybody uh, even uh, want to 
hazard a guess is how much this might cost when, when all is said and done. Alan, I'm going to have the city administrator uh, answer that question, uh, Kathy Ann Averos. Clearly, we expect that this storm is likely to exceed our existing budgeted amount. Um, as you know, Alan, in prior years, we have been able to address any deficit the following year on the tax recap. However, we're also aware that there may be a declaration of emergency issued um, in the event that the city were eligible to get um, additional funds from either state or federal government. Uh, we are going to be closely capturing all costs associated with the storm. We understand we have a 48-hour uh, window during which time any funds that we expend may be able to be reimbursed to the community. So we will be prepared to take advantage of any financial reimbursements that are available to us and we'll be capturing all those costs moving forward. Uh, we are looking at the Boston Globe's website right now. Uh, Governor Baker has issued a state of emergency, and apparently there is a uh, travel ban that has uh, just been uh, administered. Um, has anybody uh, heard anything about that in the room? Uh, we hadn't heard anything about it as of 11.30, but, uh, so you're a little more current uh, than we are because we've been preparing for you. So, uh, but, um, and the storm. Uh, but uh, but in any case, uh, that uh, is, is that, um, it, it, that so that you saw that on the governor's website? Uh, no, actually on the Boston Globe's on website. The Boston Globe website. Too, so. uh, is go over to the Globe's website right now so I can get a little uh, more complete picture. Okay. Uh, okay. I was, uh, just that just popped up on my uh, phone through one of the uh, push alerts. So well, I'm I'm I'm, I'm sure it's accurate then. Right. Uh, does that uh, um, prompt any more questions from you, Alan? Let me uh, first of all. Uh, Give you guys an idea of uh, there is a, a statewide travel ban uh, according to uh, what the globe is reporting uh, via the governor's office uh, the ban is effective at midnight on non-essential motor vehicle travel uh, the state of connecticut has instituted one that begins at uh, 9 p.m tonight so uh, i'm curious as far as uh, the chief of police uh, mr racine uh, how do you how do you go about uh, you start issuing tickets? Do you tell people to get off the roads? How do you uh, how do you enforce uh, one of these things? Uh, when the governor declares a traveling ban, as you're saying he did, is an emergency violation of executive order. If, if someone had to be cited, that's what we would cite them with, and we could tow their car. Obviously, we would not do that. We would try to get people to comply and go home. If it's an emergency, we would get them to where they need to go. Again, we're looking for compliance here, not to arrest or tow cars. We're looking for compliance. If anybody's got any questions, I didn't mean to hog it for everybody, but if anybody Not else has any uh, questions, uh, feel free. Be be before we wrap up with you, Alan, we also have uh, Dr. Valancourt here, if you have any questions for him, and we have uh, Chief uh, Lupachico here, Chief of Operations, if you have any questions for him. I, I think we're okay. Yes. Hi, Joe. Hi. Hi. Um, this is for you, Ken. Yes. There's, there was uh, some talk about uh, salt um, delivery today. There is. So, so we have uh, a little over 200 tons coming in today, uh, throughout the day, uh, possibly even more, depending on, on the delivery schedules. They're not only delivering to us, so we're not quite sure. They've guaranteed us 200 tons, um, so that'll be happening all day long. Do you think that's going to be enough for this storm? It will be, okay. for what we have, yes. Okay. Mayor, are you going to be out and about checking out things tomorrow? I will be. Yep, and into the night, and into the next night. So. Uh, I, I, I plan on being extremely active. Will this oh. be your first uh, snowstorm? Uh, <laughs> in charge of not it? in my long lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> As mayor, yes, yes. Yeah, so well, good luck to you. A little dusting over the weekend, but I don't think uh, that amounted to a, a real storm. But uh, thank you very much for those uh, good wishes. And uh, once again, uh, my thanks to everybody uh, for coming, uh, um, I plan to uh, to be around a lot, to be on the air a lot, and uh, so um, thank you very much. Thank you.